What's up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Pro Cyclist series and today we are heading into season 3. So it's been a good ride at Iolo Kermessa, you can see our results on screen, perhaps this is a little better reflection of our full season. Uh, we've had a fair kind of mixture of results, the Trofeo Laguelia was a good win for us, our first win for the team. We won from the breakaway I think at the Copi at Bartoli as well. Uh, we won the climbing classification at the Roots of Occitani, a stage at the Vuelta of Burgos. You can see our level, we're kind of very competitive and winning dot pro category races, but when it comes to the World Tour category, we haven't quite been there just yet. And looking at my current attributes, I do like them, but I do definitely want to become more well-rounded, more mountain, more flat to come closer to that hill attribute, more sprint to come closer to the acceleration, more time trialing as well, just so we can really try and compete in all manner of races. But anyway, of course, we are heading to Total Energies next season, and I definitely want to try and stay here for a couple seasons, try and really cement ourselves as a name and a leading rider in this team, which will be difficult. We do have Anthony Terji, Peter Sagan, Roman Bardet, three world-class riders in this squad. You can see the rest of the transfer on your screen right now as well. Ellie Gasper, a very good climber joining the team. Also fun to see two Brits joining in James Shaw and Mark Donovan as well. Two very capable riders right there. Glancing quickly to Yolo Kamesa. They are losing also Marcel Dina. He's a pretty crucial loss. And you can see the riders they're bringing in. A couple of good youngsters, which you would expect from a team of this calibre. But they are keeping Feta, Volta and Lorenzo Fortunato. And what I'll do, guys, I won't go through all the transfers in depth. But I will quickly skip through each team right now on screen in the background so you can see how the world of cycling is looking in terms of the AI team's transfers. We do have some intriguing moves in there, the likes of Leo Hater joining his brother Ethan at the Ineos Grenadiers. I also know that Lotto Suzao are now super powered with Jasper Sturven and Eve Lampert joining to form a brilliant duo in the Cobble Classics of course. Some good signings as well. For Arkea Samsic, they signed Damiano Caruso, Matteo Moschetti as well. Good young sprinter for them. They brought in a couple of Italians, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, hopefully this will give you just a quick overview. You can pause on any team if you wish, just to see uh, where everyone is right now. And currently, it looks like Total Energies are going to be ranked 13th. Okay, heading into... 2023 so we are kind of the lower tier of world tour teams but we're not kind of scraping in the likes of team dsm quebec assos bike exchange they're only just about a world tour team so i think we have a pretty good squad and this is definitely a step up for us in terms of rankings no surprise to see polk van Aert and roglic the top three riders in the world and when it comes to the team rankings yumbo visma uae and ineos cool to see though yolo kometa did make the top 20 which actually was the second best content protein behind Astana who are somehow uh, not a world tour team in this save right now. Let's check where we were in Super Prestige. Okay, we were 23rd in Super Prestige. That is well above what I anticipated for sure. And in terms of victories as well, we have Lee Ullman, who is from New Zealand, I'm going to go with, not Australia. I'm not too sure. Anyway, uh, he's won 34 races this season. Okay, he's dominated the Asian cycling calendar. We won though eight races on our own. No one else won eight, all by ourselves in 24th place. And again, I'll briefly try to recap what's happened around the world. Peo Bilbao, Tadej Pogacar and Fausto Masnada winning the Grand Tours. That is uh, interesting, I would say. Interesting for sure. Uh, we have Tobias Foss, Sepp Kuss on the podium at La Vuelta as well. You can see some other race winners. We, of course, have Ivan Garcia Cortina wearing the rainbow jersey. It'll be cool to see as well Magnus Court wear that European Champions jersey. The monuments were won. No real surprises apart from Dorian Godon winning Liège, Baston Liège for sure. Massive surprise there. And we actually get the XP to go up to level 17 in the off season. So I'm very excited about this, anticipating this one. We also get access to the Tour de France and that is a uh, perfectly time you could say as we join a world tour French team next year. Anyway, let's take a look. We of course only get the skill points. So um, yeah, pretty gutted. And I think I'll probably go for a performance related skill point. Let's maybe go for training so we can just make sure we're less tired for races. Oh yes guys, we have made it into 2023 and we are a member 
of Total Energy's officially Barze, Peter Sagan, Terji. They're all our teammates. I cannot wait to get into this. Let's take a look at our calendar. So I've really spent quite a lot of time thinking about which races I want to ride this season. So we're going to start off, I think, in France. You can see in today's episode, we have Algarve. I think I'll skip Omelie Pet Newsblad and head to France for uh, a couple of good classics there. And I am focusing here on some Italian races. We have Terreno coming up, San Remo. I think I'll add uh, Strada Bianca as well to our schedule. Then we'll head to Belgium for the classic season, I hope. Hopefully riding Paris-Roubaix. I then hope to compete at the Ardennes Classics before heading to our debut Grand Tour at the Giro d'Italia, which I'm so, so excited for. We didn't ride a Grand Tour last season, of course. And I do have the Tour de France available to me. But I'm thinking, if we're thinking of this from a realism point of view, I don't think a rider that's 20 years old would be thrown into the Tour de France in their first year with the World Tour team. So, I think we'll focus on the Giro instead this year, guys. Maybe go to La Vuelta later in the year as well. So we can do two Grand Tours. But um, yeah, we'll go stage hunting at the Giro, see what we can do there, rather than going to the Tour de France. Let me know down below if you want to change it, if you definitely want to see us at the Tour de France this season. Of course, we can go next year. Um, but yeah, that's my thinking right now. Giro, no Tour, and maybe Vuelta later in the year. So yeah, I've added Strada to our opening few months of this season. So I think today we'll start at Marseille before heading to Etoile de Bessege for our first races with Toto Energies. And I almost always start in Mallorca at the Mallorca Classics. It breaks my heart, but I can't go there every single season I ride on this game. So we'll skip them this year. I don't even know if teammate requests have been working this year in Pro Cyclist, but we're almost there. We've got all of the conditions bar a top five rider in the team. Apparently, we're a top six rider in the team. So hopefully when we get our next level up, we'll have access to our choosing which teammates help us out at specific races. And in terms of objectives, this is looking pretty messy right now, but I have got Strada, Tirreno, the Ronde van Vlaardaren as well as one of our early season objectives. Remember, we do have that 73 cobbles, so we can hopefully compete in some cobble classics for the first time this year and really try and fight for the win. And of course, we'll be aiming for that Giro d'Italia. We are here, guys. The Grand Prix Marseille is about to get underway. A hilly classic. I love this race. Such a fun parkour. And it seems that Roman Bar Day, our teammate, of course, is a big favourite for the race. For us, though, we seem to have a bit of a virus going on. So, um, yeah, we're not probably going to be in our best shape. Look at this. We are underway. We are underway. Our journey with Toto Energies and hopefully a long and successful one is underway as well. There is Roman Bardet in the jersey too. Both of us on a pretty poor day, so not really expecting to get off to the best start here. Still 70k to go, still most of the peloton all together. We have just had a couple of attacks. You can see them just up the road there. Vendrame, Anthony Perez, some good riders trying to bridge to the earlier breakaway. And so now 38k to go. It looks like Group Palmer FDJ trying to bring in now the super group of 17 riders at the front of the race. I think they will on the Col de Crete. Oh my mistake, the Col de Crete begins right now. We are right at the front of the peloton. 122 riders are here. Let's set a fairly steady rhythm. After we're over this climb, I think we can pretty much start looking to the finish. The legend, Bruno Armorai on the front. What a man he is. But now Lillian Kalmajan attacks for Delco. We have Simon Card trying to react, but no, everyone remains together. Roman Siegler upping the rhythm but everyone together still so 50 riders still together and this is definitely the tricky part because uphill right now we don't have too much energy left and now Kalmajan attacks again we can't really respond to that I think I'm working for Bardet here now David Godu trying to up the rhythm he chooses not to again can I lead this entire peloton along not really let's try and put in a little dig to help Bardet if nothing else and now maybe pull a bit for Bardet but Knox and Kalmajan are up the road Road. All right, myself and Barce are clinging on to the front of the race right now. Still, we have Kalmajan and Knox up the road. I think we're going to be competing for a runners-up position, maybe a top five, because now Cyril Bart and Aurelian Parapentra are gone. We cannot follow, and it looks like Kalmajan or Knox are winning here. Okay, we have 3K to go as we get ready to enter Marseille. The guys up the road don't have a massive lead. Let's go up to 99. We're not really racing for ourselves here. Barze, hopefully you can do something, my man, but 
up the road. They are going to take it, and it is going to be Lillian Camjan winning the Grand Prix Marseille as ahead of Cyril Bass. It's an all French podium as well, with Aurelien Parapentra taking that. For us, it's a decent result in our debut for the team. Yeah, I was kind of caught in two minds there. I didn't know whether to work for Bardet, didn't know whether to conserve energy. In the end, we didn't have enough either way, so we finished 16th place on our debut. But we do get the chance to definitely improve on that result at Etoile de Bessege. We have a couple of flatter stages to start, slightly uphill to be fair, could suit us a little more. I think stage four will be a little too difficult for us before we finish in a TT. And it looks like we have kicked that virus, and I think, looking at our squad, we could definitely be one of the team leaders, so definitely looking forward to this race now. However, it looks like we're working for Tom Abuda, and rightly so, in the sprint today. 75 sprints on the man. We also get our first look, if I'm not mistaken, at the new world champ, Ivan Garcia Cortina, in that Movistar World Champions jersey. Looks pretty good, I must say. Weird to see him as the world champion, but um, nonetheless, he deserves it. Wout van Aert is here too, so uh, any chance of winning is now gone. And I do actually remember watching this stage in real life because we do have this very short and punchy finish. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Christophe Laporte won the stage just ahead of Nasser Buani, but you can see it here. Very narrow, very steep briefly before flattening to the line. So it's definitely an area to be aware and could suit us, you know, even more than Buddha. But now 3k to go, I am going to use that sneak because we definitely need to try and get to the front ahead of this little uphill pitch. Let's go up to 90, should maybe grab a wheel, but I think just going like this is probably our best bet. Let's go 99 and sprint into this hill here, try and attack it from the bottom, use our punching abilities to maybe win this stage. Jake Stewart though comes around us in the end and wins deservedly ahead of the world champion, Ivan Garcia Cortina. For us, it's a pretty solid fourth place would have liked the podium but I think we take that result. So we move on and another stage that I think could sneaky suit us. More of a sprinter stage on paper but that uphill drag to the line can we capitalise on that? Oh my word, guys. How clean does this white Young Riders jersey look on the Total Energies kit? I think we're second in this competition right now, uh, only borrowing it today. But I definitely want to win this competition just because this jersey looks so clean. And so to this point, the stage has been surprisingly difficult considering the parkours and uh, the profile. You can see a lot of our guys really struggling for energy. And now I'm trying to search for a wheel. And now Wan Ayuso decides to attack. I'm not going to follow that. Instead, I'm going to go up to 92 just to try and stay here. I don't think anyone is really going to get away right now. You can see Buda, our teammate, is just up the road. They're going maybe for that KOM sprint, are they? 1.5k to go. Now let's sprint ourselves into the final kilometre. We're blocked in a little bit though and that is going to cost us any chance but our teammate Buda is going to maybe take victory today or is he going to be denied on the line by RV Decline? Oh, we could have maybe challenged or helped Buda win this stage but it's only P3 and P10 for the team. That's definitely a stage that got away today. We do hang around in the GC. We hang around as well in the other competitions. We hopefully still wear that Young Riders jersey as well. But uh, oh, we could have won this stage. Another sprint stage today. And I think we're probably helping out Buda. We find ourselves in a good position as a team. Jerome Kuzan, a breakaway specialist with 82 Baradur, 78 flat on the day on a plus five day. And I think this was the stage that Tim Wellens won in real life. I'm not too sure. Anyway, we have him up the road and he'll surely be the last man remaining. And so now Kuzan trying to attack away from Wesley Crater. They've dropped the rest of the breakaway and only 7k to go. Could he hold on here? And you know what, guys? This is going to be a breakaway victory. We have a couple riders who are being lapped right now. Kuzan trying to attack away from Crater. Is that the right tactic? He probably doesn't have the sprint over this man. But Kuzan... Zan, I think, is going to sprint away and win stage three from the breakaway of Etoile de Bessege. What a victory. He could even go into the lead of the race as well. Let's sprint for the line behind. Just competing for the runners up places. But what a ride from our man. So crazily, Kuzan wins 1 minute 17 ahead of the peloton, which puts him exactly level on time with Jake Stewart at the front of the race. So I think we're going to be second in the GC as a team with options going into stage four. But Le Mans Bouquet is going to definitely be decisive in the GC here. This is where 
Ben O'Connor, Sam Newman, even Wout Van Aert, when I use those as well, this stage is why they're at this race because it's a climbing stage. Thibaut Pino even could win this. Let's see, it'll be an interesting one. And well, it's been a difficult stage so far. Only 70 riders also left in the peloton with 7k to go ahead of the final climb. But on a minus two day, we're not feeling too great, so not really expecting anything here. And surprisingly, Ben O'Connor looks done. He was riding potentially for Clermont Champoussin. You can see Wout Van Aert going after the leaders as well. We're working our way up. I think we can go at this tempo to the top, you know. My word. My word. Wout Van Aert has literally caught and passed Clermont Champoussin and Quinn Simmons on this hill. He is an absurd rider. He really, really is, guys. Let's try and hold on. Ivan Garcia Cortina is still here as well, but Wout Van Aert is trying to hold on at the front, and I think he's going to. Yep, Wout Van Aert wins on Le Mans Bouquet, essentially, I think, winning him a Toile de Bessege. We're going to finish just in the group behind, I think, with Ivan Garcia Cortina missing out on this group up the roads. Yep, Wout Van Aert wins a Toile de Bessege with a time trial coming up, surely seizing him as well. We finish 48 seconds back in this second group on the road. Very nice result, to be fair, in the top 20. Couldn't have expected much more today. And we are in seventh place entering that final stage. Man, I would really love to win increase our mountain and time trial stats which is what we need to compete in races like this right but well for not no surprise it's the favorite for the alley time trial but we do get a nice race day here plus two day taking us to 71 prologue which is what matters really today could we hold on to a top 10 place in the gc what's our buffer currently we currently have just under a minute to bruno Amrai, who can definitely time trial well so um it's going to be difficult if we can hold on to a top 10 i'll be very happy it's difficult to know how you're doing on a time trial when you don't have any intermediate splits. But here we come into the finish, which is where we need to focus all our red energy. Let's even go up to 99 because we're spending it so, so quickly here. Oh, I spend it a little early, perhaps, but we are going to finish 48 seconds down. There we go then, Josef Journey wins in Alley Walfenaar, only fourth place, he had the victory wrapped up, he didn't care about that one. He wins by over half a minute on a, uh, how's he won by that much on such a short stage race? Only three riders within a minute of him. For us though, we do hold on to our top 10 place despite losing to the great Bruno Amaray. And fourth place in the end in that beautiful white jersey, it's a shame I must admit. But we do get a couple points heading towards level 18 right now. And like I said, I cannot wait to increase our mountain and time trialing attributes, specifically that mountain, I would say. And in the next one, we are currently set to head to Portugal and France for a duo of French classics, one day classics, of course. Let me know though, guys, if you want to see specific races this year, let me know uh, in the comments to this video. I don't think I'd have played ahead by the time you watch this just yet, so I can adjust the schedule uh, immediately coming up. Let me know as well, should we go to the gym? Zero as I'm planning or do you want to see us at the Tour de France this season anyway that's all from me hope you enjoyed smash that like button if you did subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one